Um, so our next speaker, all the way from the Highlands and Inverness, um, is Liz Jones, who's going to be giving us a talk on long niji steading, agriculture improvement by the Weems Estate. Liz, are you with us? Liz, you're muted. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> classic, classic teams. We've only been doing it for two years. <laughs> we all fall into that. So thanks, Liz. Appreciate for joining us from Inverness. And uh, over to you. Okay, thanks very much. Um, thanks very much for inviting us. Um, this talk outlines the archaeological project work that Adam and Archaeology has carried out for the Reams and March estates at Long Wunnedry Farm on the Gosford estate in Long Nidri since 2016. Uh, work that's still ongoing. An initial death space assessment has been followed more recently by a programme of historic building recording that's focused on the complex of buildings at the heart of the site, the principal historic agricultural farming establishment of the improvement period. The setting and the wider farm complex are to be developed for partly residential and partly commercial uses with the steading including provision for of um, community facilities and workshop space. Oh. <laughs> um, so here we are in Lonage, as you can see, the site is just on the other side to the south of the railway line. The wider area on the right hand side is the area of our dust space assessment that took in a um, bigger area. The area, the fields to the south of the steading have actually been evaluated um, for housing development, which is now ongoing. And um, that was done by AOC a couple of years ago. And they also recorded some of the mill board garden, which I'll come on to a bit later. So here on the left is a plan from 1778 that shows the pre-improvement dispersed settlement of Long Nidji. You can see the area of the farmstead is in the area circle with the purple um, around those numbers 43-44. And then on 1798, and the estate plan by Thomas Richardson on the right hand side shows the demolition of these older buildings um, and the older crofts and the laying out of the present complex or at least its earliest part so um circled by in the purple circle you can see the the original farmhouse which fronts onto a garden to the left and then the l-shaped steading to the rear of, of that And then here by the 1854 first edition ordnance survey map, you can see the settings taking shape and you can see it in a bit more detail with that garden to the front of the farmhouse and the L shape to the rear and some additional buildings indicated by the number 32 built to the rear of the farmhouse. Um, so this is the initial expansion. You can also see on the end of that eastern part of the L um, that's where the mill building has been built, and you can see the mill pond just to the southeast of that. By 1894, in the second edition, and you can see the addition of the cattle courts away to the northeast there, but also that the L shape has expanded considerably, and you can see that mill um, garden in a bit more detail. Also, at the back of the farmhouse, the farmhouse itself has had a few more extensions and then um, there's an addition of a cart shed um, which has replaced those earlier buildings. Oops. So this is the area that we've been looking at. The farmhouse isn't included in the current uh, planning application and our current works. Just to the bottom right you can see the middle dam and that walled, walled garden area, that was the area I mentioned that was already recorded by AOC as part of the earlier works, but they've been doing a lot of reconstruction and repair in that area. So that's been part of our monitoring. We've been recording the um, the, the changes going on there. Um, and so, yeah, you can see here the, the, the layout of the original L shape and then the extensions uh, later made. 
So here we go. This is the farmhouse and um, it's Lake Georgia with some later modifications um, and it backs onto the steading complex. Um, you can see in the left hand picture just the roof of the, the stables um, peeking up. Um, this wasn't part of our recording, as I said, but it's just. It's a, and here's here's the stables themselves, the stable range on the northeast side. It's a lovely vernacular structure. It's got various compartments going along. And our work has been monitoring all the ongoing repairs. Here you can see the contractor stripping the roof. And then once that was off, we were able to go in and start recording the interior of the buildings. The exteriors all had architects elevations, but we were drawing the internal elevations. Um, you can see here the surviving stalls, which have been much patched up. And here's the site drawing of that same elevation. So our recording work involved hand drawing inside, along with um, modelled photographic imagery. And here's the stable floor, um, which has been taken that way. So you can see all the different um, surface treatments of the floor, the stables and the, the patching up. So the stable preserves a number of interesting interiors. And lots of different details. This is a buyer with some troughs and uh, on the right you can see the assembly marks that are visible on its roof structure. Um, here's another on the top left, this is another one of the stalls and then an example of a bit of flagged flooring further along and then on the right hand side is a tack room which has got a blocked up fireplace just in that rear corner you can see there. So this is an additional building which is on on the kind of west end of that north stable range and um, with this curious curved wall and additional um, structures and at first we weren't um, originally sure what that was what that was used for you can see it's um, got a really strengthened roof structure now and it's also got embedded wall posts and on the left this circular setting in the floor so we think this is some sort of it's a horse gin of some kind, um, but any other <laughs> ideas would be very welcome. And there you can see the pivot post. Um, so here's the cart shed. Um, this first appears on the plans of the later 19th century, as we saw before, replacing the earlier buildings immediately to the rear of the farmhouse. You can just see the farmhouse on the left there. So the lower floor has all got all the cart shed openings and an additional room on the right hand side. And then at either end, there's these outer stairs leading to the hayloft above. So this is just a picture of the kind of lower part. Um, and you can see the inside partition here. Um, there's been secondary strengthening of the loft floor. Um, and there's also evidence for possibly imported timber um, there's elaborate race knife markings, which indicates that these have come from a timber merchant, um, and it's possibly a Baltic import. And there's a loft interior, again, shows really nice vernacular construction details in the roof structure and shows how there's been repairs added um, to, the, to the rafters, but the, um, the original one's also left in situ. So yeah, as I said before, our survey record was created from a combination of hand drawing and digital model photography. So here's the hand drawing of that first floor and all the elevations and then converted into um, digitised plans to be passed to the client. And then here with a bit more detail of the windows and those openings. So this is the, the granary, the one in pink um, in the plan on the left. And um, this is at the heart of the complex and they've seen a number of phases. Um, it's part of the original L-shaped setting and was originally a stable, certainly the west end. But as you can see, the east, the eastern building is substantially wider and higher. Um, there's been several phases of re remodeling. Um, the eaves have been raised on the western 
building, which you can kind of make out on the very far left of that picture with a change in um, stonework. And there's been several extensions and reworkings. So here's the inside of the Western building, showing the grain silo, the West End, and this was dismantled um, and recorded during the works. And this is the East End of that East building. Um, it shows that there was a former floor structure. Um, you can see that just running around the top of those windows there. And this area is adjacent to the mill building. So the left hand um, wall in this picture, that, that's next to the, the mill. Um, and that contained a um, certain amount of grain processing machinery. As you can see here, still in place um, against the wall. And as I said, the other side of that wall at a low level is the mill wheel itself. So yeah, onto the, the mill down the mill system. I think I might have missed that. Yes, yeah, here we go, sorry. Um, so yeah, here, we, here it is in a bit more detail. And um, the plan is to restore this system as part of the, the current work. So to reinstate the mill pond and, and so that the stream uh, continues to flow over the, the mill dam and to restore the walled garden. As you can see here, the, um, the lade running underneath the mill and through to the other side and um, powering the mill from below. So here we are and um, the pond is being um, cleared here and the dam wall repaired. There's quite a lot of um, vegetation grown up through this wall, a couple of fairly mature trees, so there's a good amount of restoration that needs, needs to be done. But as you can see, there's still some of the iron fixings um, and the sluice uh, remaining. Um, and here, just at the bottom, is the mill dam wall. So once the pond is reinstated, it will flow back over there again and through this um, product, formerly productive garden, which is also an ornamental feature. And you can see the, the nice little um, stone built bridge there. The right hand wall was um, espaliered for fruit trees, and so there's a number of the iron fittings still can be found in that wall um, where the trees would have been attached and trained along wires. And there's still a couple of trees still in there um, and still growing. Uh, one's a fig and one's an apple. And here you can see the outflow of that burn going underneath the road. Um, underneath the road bridge and below the mill. And this is a um, really well built vaulted chamber that's pretty high actually, you can actually walk walk through there. And here, this is the mill itself, so in the centre of this picture, on the left is that granary building that we previously saw, and on the right is the later, part of the later cattle courts. So this is the rear entrance to the mill and you can see the, the lintel over the top of the door reading 1850, which is um, very handy, but that um, fits in really nicely with the first edition of the Ordnance Survey where we first see that mill building um, on the map. Um, we've done very limited recording in the mill building itself at the moment because it's um, still very overgrown and still fairly unsafe. So. Um, we're kind of waiting on safe access to get in there and, and complete the recording in that area. Um, but here's just a quick snap of the mill interior from um, earlier on. There's some evidence for the workings and for um, access up to the upper levels. And this is the mill wheel chamber. This was um, formerly roofed. Uh, the mill wheel itself is below the features um, coming out of the wall face on that right hand image. And those are the, those kind of go back into the granary on the other side to, to do with the, the, the real mechanism. On the left is the surviving mill wheel. There's lots of debris in here. Um, it still needs cleared out and tidied up and recorded, but it's possibly repairable. Um, 
Um, yeah, once uh, once all that's accessible, we'll go and record that. Um, on the right is, is another example that uh, Tom's put in, which is uh, re re recorded recently in Northumberland, which is fairly different, but uh, just gives you an idea of the different types of things that come across. So here's, here's the cattle courts, and so these are to the northeast of the main complex, and were a secondary development of a later 19th century. Century, um, and the picture just shows the cows a few years ago when it was still in use. But you can see, um, even then, it's in a fairly dilapidated state. Um, and here, this is the opposite part of the cattle courts, and um, very patched up, very um, yeah, a real mishmash. And you can see how it's been repaired over time. Uh, and become very overgrown and pretty unstable. And we encountered quite a few access problems um, uh, during the survey. So some of it was so overgrown that you know we were unable to really access to take any photos at all. Um, but this is part of the other side. So we're able to make um, good photographic records and take some photogrammetry of the elevations of this area as well. So just a few um, general notes on the kind of setting as a whole. Um, the site is notable for the very, very geology across the buildings. Um, there's a range of sandstones and igneous rock that's been used. Um, so sort of speaking of many different periods, recycling um, and a variety of different quarry sources. Um, and these seem to be closely related to the building phases. Um, we, you can see the cattle courts made of entirely different um, stone to, to the granary in the stable, for instance. Uh, but there's also a variety of tooling detail which has helped unravel the building phases. Um, you can see that in the picture of the granary with the, the clear kind of break of um, uh, halfway up, and also with the cattle court with a kind of change in construction halfway up as well. The wall garden itself seems to be made of a uh, complete mishmash of lots of lots of very different stone types. So we also got some evidence for much earlier buildings, um, at possibly at the site or maybe in the near vicinity. Um, there's this roll moulded door or window jam that's been built into the dam outflow. You can see on the left hand side. Um, so this would be 16th or early 17th century in date. And there's also a block of diagonally tooled ashlar uh, with a mason's mark, which is possibly medieval, um, which is found um, in the same feature. So yeah, just to conclude, the complex is also full of um, lots of rich individual details relating to farming life. Um, there's a whole series of these awards pinned up in the mill waiting for us to uh, fully record it. Um, and yeah, as I said, still um, looking forward to kind of getting in there, and finding and recording the mill itself. And um, we're awaiting the final plans for the mill building. And um, I think the initial suggestions for that the cattle court would make a lovely cafe courtyard. And so, um, but we're still waiting to see what the um, what the final plans are for for the setting. And yeah, so that's just it. And um, thanks very much to Kenny and Antoine who did all the on-site recording, all the digitising and all the um, photography. Ed Taylor, the um, consultant, and to the client, the Weems and Mark Chesney. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, fair echo there. Um, certainly not a second prize, shall we say, uh, uh, from your last day. It was a fantastic. Uh, uh, example of recording our settings.